Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-white Geist of St. Traft deck. This 3-mana 2-2 two -two legendary Spirit Cleric has Hexproof, and whenever Geist attacks we create a temporary 4-4 white angel creature token with flying that's tapped and attacking. We exile that token at the end of combat. So a temporary token that does significantly increase the pressure and damage output from our Geist. Having Hexproof means it's pretty difficult for a lot of decks to interact with once it's in play, especially once we start suiting it up with various auras and equipment, which is very much part of our game plan. I've broken the deck down into a few different categories, so for the brief rundown, we've got multiple ways to give Geist flying or other forms of evasion, couple creatures to give it protection so it can attack past larger blockers. We also have multiple equipment to suit up our Geist to increase its power, also multiple ways to draw extra cards if it connects with the opponent, which of course pairs very nicely with all the evasion we can give it, and then we've got multiple counter spells to potentially counter opposing sweepers which could still get our Geist or other bounce effects. Then we also have a few ways to make our Geist indestructible which can help against said sweepers, and then we've got a few removal spells of our own to interact with the opponent's creatures, and finally we've got a miscellaneous category which includes some of our other card draw effects like SRAM and Core Spirit Dancer which can also reward us for playing all those auras. And now for a more detailed breakdown, starting with the evasion category, we've got a giver of runes, Skralf, and then the new Pippin at 2 mana, which can all give some form of evasion. In the case of Pippin, it can give protection from creatures to get past any blockers, and then a Skralf and giver of runes need to name a color. Then we've got multiple auras giving flying, at 1 mana there's Griffspoon and Arcane Flight, at 2 mana there's Angelic Gift, Cartouche of Knowledge, and a rune of flight which all draw a card when they enter and one with wind giving plus two plus two and flying and then we also have security bypass making geist unblockable if it's attacking alone and the moment we declare our attackers geist is considered attacking alone even though it is joined by a 4-4 angel token afterwards so it still works with a bypass and then there's some all of the skyclaves as an equipment giving plus two plus two first strike and flying and we can equip it right away when it enters and on sarah's wings giving plus one plus one flying vigilance and lifelink so also makes it difficult for the opponent to outrace our Geist. And then in the enhancement category, if you will, we've got Ethereal Armor and All That Glitters, which work very well with our author enchantments and equipment. We've got Sentinel Size giving plus one plus one and Vigilance. And then there's multiple card draw enchantments that reward us for hitting the opponent. There's Combat Research, Curiosity, Curious Obsession, and Staggering Insight, also granting a lifelink. Then there's Dorothea, 4-4 Flyer, and when it attacks or blocks we have to sacrifice it at the end of combat, but once we do we can still disturb it from the graveyard, turning into an aura we can put on our Geist, essentially doubling the ability to make a 4-4 token when it attacks. And then we also have multiple equipment with Black Blade Reforge, giving plus one plus one for each land we control, cheaper to equip legendary creatures. And then Underrill, a recent addition, giving plus three plus one. And when our creature attacks, if it's a legendary, we get to generate two one one spirit tokens that are also tapped and attacking. And then we've got a Nettle Cyst, which grows with a number of artifacts and enchantments we control, also very synergistic in this deck, and comes attached to a germ token, but we can still move it onto the Geist afterwards. And then a Sword of Fire and Ice, as well as Sword of Forge and Frontier, and those different protections can also come in handy to potentially attack past blockers, so could have also put them in the evasion category. Then we've got multiple counter spells, including Mausoleum Wanderer, which we can keep in play as kind of a living counter spell that can counter instants or sorceries for one. Got Spell Pierce to counter unless they pay two for a non creature spell. Wash Away, of course, perfect for countering opposing commanders for just a single blue. Reprieve can send a spell back and draw cards, so that can buy us an extra turn to potentially kill the opponent in the meantime. Same with Memory Lapse, sending a spell back on top of the opponent's deck. Got Tails End to counter legendaries. Unsubstantiate can bounce creatures in play or spells on the stack. And then of course the classic counter spell, Dovin's Veto as an uncounterable negate. And then Geist Light Snare we can routinely cast for just a single blue if we control Geist with one of our enchantments. And Spell Queller, a spirit that can be flashed in to take hold of an opposing spell with mana value 4 or less until they deal with the Spell Queller. Then we've got the indestructible category and other protection effects like selfless savior and selfless spirit that can be sacrificed to give our team indestructible so that can get around opposing sweepers and then mithril code can be flashed in and attached to our geist making it indestructible the equipment itself also indestructible and then we've got valorous stance which can double up as a removal spell for creatures with toughness for a greater or can make a creature indestructible until end of turn and then we also have a slip out the back to phase out our geist and put a plus one counter on it, especially useful against exile effects that might get around indestructible or other mass bound spells like River's Rebuke, and that way we get to keep our geist and all enchantments and equipment attached to it in play without needing to redeploy them all. 
And then we've got our removal section with Source to Plowshares, we've got Fading Hope as a bounce spell, Witness Protection, Enchanting an Opposing Commander can also be very effective, since we're often flying over it with our Geist anyway, so we can ignore any 1-1 on the ground. We've got Fateful Absence to destroy a creature or planeswalker, give the opponent a clue token, which they probably won't have time to sacrifice. Soul Partition can be a pseudo-bounce effect for our own stuff, but we're usually using it as a tempo play exiling an opposing non-land permanent, making it too more expensive. And then Cyclonic Rift, also quite flexible, can cast it for 2 mana as a bounce effect, or overload it for 7, bouncing every opposing and non-land permanent instead. And then there's Brazen Borrower, can bounce something for 2 mana, and still have a 3 on a flyer afterwards, and it having Flash also plays well alongside our author counter spells. Same with the Wandering Emperor, which can be flashed in, and potentially exile an opposing tapped creature or start making Samurai. And then we've got the Miscellaneous section, where we have Core Spirit Dancer and Sram Senior Edificer, which can draw quite a few cards of all our cheap auras. We've got Esper Sentinel, punishing opposing non-creature spells. Curse of Silence, naming an opposing commander, can also buy us a lot of time. And then we've got a Little Chat as an instant speed card draw effect, and can easily sacrifice our Angel token to Casualty before it goes away, so we get to draw an extra card. And then a Rattle Chains can be flashed in for 2 mana, and then gives our other spirits flash as well. So now if we're up against another blue deck, for instance, we can play our Geist at instant speed, making it easier to maneuver around opposing counter spells. And then there's Arcane Signet for a bit of ramp. Invasion of Theros can search up any of our auras when it enters, and with our 4 4 token from Geist, it's very easy to transform the battle right away to get a Pharah, which can also draw more cards when enchantments enter. And then a Catilda can also grow with a number of spirits and enchantments in play, so that's quite a bit of synergy, can also be disturbed as an aura that we can put on our Geist. And finally, single combat can be a nice sweeper effect in this deck, since we get to keep our one Geist with all the enchantments and equipment attached, and the opponent only gets to keep one of their creatures. And then a mana base, mostly just blue-eyed dual lands, couple of utility lands including access tunnel, potentially making our Geist unblockable, although it's usually going to have more than 3 power. And then we've got a Plaza of Heroes to potentially make it indestructible, can also help out against opposing sweepers. Hall of the Storm Giants, my only creature land, can also help close out the game. And a couple channel lands, Soaring City can bounce something, and Iganjo can also be a removal. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. This portion of the video is brought to you by Cook and Becker and their officially licensed Magic the Gathering art print collection. Their pieces include Kiora the Crashing Wave by Scott Fisher, Nissa of Shadowed Bows by Dave Raposa, Buzzery Cat by Toshiaki Takayama, Kalia of the Vast by Scott Fisher, and Bitter Blossom by Rebecca Gay. There will be two variants available for each one, the standard digital print and the deluxe screen print, which can come in different sizes. Each print will also come with a certificate of authenticity, and I love what they've done with the mana symbols on those. Every order of a premium print has a 1 in 10 chance of receiving an exclusive not-for-sale print of Black Lotus by Christopher Rush. This is a limited edition print run, so get yours while they're still available, and check out their website using the link in the video description, and any purchases will help support the channel, so that's always very much appreciated. And now back to the gameplay. Okay, we're on the play, facing Atraxa, Praetor's Voice. And uh, our hand is maybe lacking a few ways to enhance Geist. A 4-4 with a lifelink can also be tough to race. Giver of Runes can give guys protection, but the rest of my hand leaves a lot to be desired. Alright, this is a little bit better. Still light on ways to increase power and toughness, since flying by itself may not be enough. But I'll give it a shot. And the rest can have a look. At least we have two redundant flying enchantments. And then now the plan is end of turn rattle chains, that way I can play Geist at instant speed if our opponent keeps up blue mana. And now I just probably main phase Geist. And get in for two. So yeah, Trucks are still gonna be somewhat of a problem, don't have a counter spell lined up. But we can bounce it at least once. And we are applying a good bit of pressure. But a bit of our mana going to waste. Don't have the double blue to cast a Brazen Borrower either. It's gonna be a Tasha next. 
Okay, so if that pluses, it can shrink down our creatures when they attack. Although 1-1 one, one Geist is probably still good enough. I'm wondering how that interacts with the token from Geist. I believe the token itself will still be a 4-4. Either way, let's uh, just take our turn. Spirit Dancer was a decent draw. So now I can play Spirit Dancer plus Arcane Flight. Question is what to do with the Arcane Flight. Could put it on Geist, could put it on the Spirit Dancer itself so it grows. But I guess if we put it on Geist, we're guaranteed to take out Tasha. Even if they uh, shrink down our token. Opponent's got a Swan Song to counter that. Still get to draw at least. And a Sentinel's not bad either. Although I'm out of blue mana, so... So yeah, the token itself unaffected by Tasha, because it's not declared as an attacker in the same way as Geist, so Tasha down. Do I tap out for Sentinel? Sweeper would be bad. But I think uh, we're in trouble either way if they have one. If we had more blue mana for a slip out the back, that would have been useful. And now we still have Brazen Borrower to bounce Atraxa. Although I guess they did get to proliferate the minus one counter, I didn't think of that. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I can replay Geists and then just pass a turn, and next turn equip it with a Comet Research. Ah, uh, sure. And then we'll get to draw, of course, Spirit Dancer as well. Does have Vigilance as well, so yeah, this 4-4 uh, four, is annoying. Kaya can do all sorts of things. It's going to take out Spirit Dancer. And Atraxa attacks. Don't mind if I do. Okay, that's a successful trade. I'm pretty happy with that. Underill, a good top deck. Yeah, let's just play Underill, equip Geist. And then I can send the tokens at Kaya and the rest at their face. So this is the Angel. Which goes face and the spirits can finish off Kaya. The one downside of not spending my blue mana is that we might be kind of bottlenecked on blue to cast research and our other spells next turn. But the extra pressure from Underhill is nice. And our opponent explodes, yeah. Opponent knows about Brazen Borrower, can bounce Atraxa and then just attack for the win. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Omnath, Locus of the Royal, so an elemental deck. And yeah, our hand seems promising. Fetch up an island. Turn to can Cyclonic Rift if needed. And then Sword of Fire and Ice is going to give us relevant protection in this matchup. Although protection from green would probably be the most useful. Although Griffspoon can also just give Geist flying. And then Geist Light Snare is going to be one mana once we enchant our Geist with a Griff's Boon. Yeah, I think I just bounce Lenor Elves to slow them down. Don't want them casting a three mana Ram spell. So we will get to resolve our Geist. And then we've got a few ways to proceed from there. Uh, probably want double blue in play. Although unlikely to channel any of these. So there's Omnath. Sram's next. So I can play Sram, play Griff's Boon, and then I still keep up Geist Light Snare. That looks good. Next turn I could play and equip Sword of Fire and Ice. And that's getting countered. 
take four from Omnith, presumably. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, that's such an efficient turn, getting to play one mana counter onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Emoti, blue-green ramp. Our hands could use an extra land for sure, but it seems promising enough to keep still. Wash away to counter Emoti, and then Sword of Forge and Frontier especially could be a nice way to get past some creatures on the ground, although Griff's Boon can also give flying. Turn 1 Kami can put a land in play. Alright, we found our second land, so can even keep up Counterspell now. Yeah, let's just counter the Dreams Druid. Could also Soul Partition it, which is maybe good enough. Make it cost 5 mana, that'll slow them down. Play Geist. Next turn I can play Sword and keep up Wash Away, which is quite powerful since it allows us to counter Emoti without raising too much suspicion. Okay, so we can attack. Get in for six. And get our sword going. Now, Wash Away also works against the Circle of Dreams Druid cast from Exile. Punt actually goes for Nissa, which can blow up our sword. That's too bad. Although now we can take out Nissa with our Angel token. Spell Pierce in hand as well. So, could Griff's Boon and then still keep up our various counter spells. Get in for a little bit more damage. Alright, Emoti, we'll see what the Cascade finds, and then we'll act accordingly. Tribute to the World Tree. So I could Spell Pierce Tribute, and then wash away Emoti. That looks good. And our opponent has seen enough. Geist is gonna kill them in two turns, and we can counter their next couple plays onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the Five Color Shrines. My hand's not great for the matchup. Uh, only two lands, of course, a problem. And then no way to give Geist evasion. Pwn can easily gum up the ground with a bunch of tokens. So let's take a free Mulgan. This hand has similar problems, but at least Sentinel can draw us a few extra cards. So I'm liking it more. Okay, perfect. We've got our evasion now with security bypass. Can keep up Reprieve and Fateful Absence next turn. And hit for one. Three mana for Cultivates. Get to draw, and now we get to Reprieve, so this is pretty brutal. Now if I tap out for Geist, our opponent could have a Wrath of God effect to sweep the board. So do we have an alternative? I think it's still fine to play Geist here. If they Wrath, we get to draw a card. So we should be able to build up to 5 mana to replay Geist. It's just gonna be the life's origin. Couple ways we can deal with it. If I Security Bypass, I can put Witness Protection on there. A Legendary Shrine. Remove all its abilities. And then we can sort of ignore all the creatures on the ground. Could also go for Mall of the Skyclaves plus Witness Protection, which I kind of like. Could even increase the Sentinel's power with Maul, although it's a bit more vulnerable to interaction. Yeah, let's go with Maul on Geist. And then Witness Protection on the uh, Life's Origin. Get in for 8 in the air. So it no longer counts as a shrine, and won't be making any 1-1s. One I guess the upside of casting Bypass last turn is that I'm more likely to have 
double blue available for counterspell if I still want to play the bypass. Put and replace cultivate and pace for sentinel. But I can also play end equipment at assist. Sentinel and artifact also contributes. So that's going to hit pretty hard. Although safest would be to just keep up counterspell. Source to plowshares. Excellent removal. Can go after geist. So goes after sentinel. And uh, yeah, if I just keep up counterspell, we should be good to go. Can still play a nettle cyst as well. Yeah, this Geist deck is brutal when it curves out. And there's not many ways of stopping it. Opponent has 7 mana available for a Kami War, which we can just counterspell. I guess Geist Light Snare also would have worked. But yeah, that does it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Itali, and uh, our hand is missing white mana, so I'll have to Mulgan. This is better. And then how do we want to sequence? Can hang on to Fable Passage till later. Turn to, I'm guessing, Pippin first, followed by Geist. Opponent with an emergent sequence for ramp. So the classic 2-mana ramp into a 4-mana ramp card into a tally is inbound. Could also play Rattle Chains, which can potentially help us uh, play Geist at instant speed, but I think I'll need the ability from Pippin, so Geist can attack past any ground blockers like a potential Itali. Invasion can also get some useful auras to give flying, of course, but I may not have the mana to do that right away. Beneath the Sands just ramping for one, so they're not necessarily going to cast an Itali yet. And we'll see if they want to trade for Pippin. I'm tempted to accept if they do. So in this case, just play Geist and then attack. And then, yeah, Invasion can just get a 1-mana Flying Aura. So I'm okay if this trade happens. Opponent accepts. Pippin cannot give itself protection. Okay, trade happens. Play Geist. And we can easily transform our own invasion. Just get a Griff's Boon or a Arcane Flight. Got a couple options. It's gonna be a Strixhaven Stadium next. And a Guardian Idol. So next turn we'll probably see an Itali, although they still need a second red source. We just drew the Arcane Flight, so now Invasion could get something else. Although we're not forced to play Invasion this turn either. Opponent doesn't have any blockers, could go Signet plus Invasion, transform it. Kind of like that idea. And then which aura? Maybe the uh, one mana Ethereal Armor. Probably the biggest bang for our buck. Could also get a Witness Protection to shut down Itali, although I'm not too worried about it transforming. So I'll grab a armor here. And guys goes face while the token transforms Invasion of Theros. And cast Ephara. Got two auras in hand, so can draw quite a few cards here. A sweeper could be bad. Don't have any real protection in place for it. Ephara doesn't have indestructible yet. And the opponent found a Valorous Stance, so that will take out our Ever Sheltering. And the Last March of the Ends, also pretty good here. So yeah, that's uh, not what we wanted to see. Take out Ephara while drawing seven cards and putting a bunch of creatures in play. Opponent's also not too far from transforming Itali to poison us to death. Thanks to all that extra mana. But it's mostly all the cards in hand that I'm worried about. Okay, so... Yeah, just suit up our Geist. Don't get to draw any cards now. 
but at least we can fly over Italy and present a pretty fast clock. Play Giver, tapped Hallowed Fountain, kind of flash in a rattle chain end of turn. And then we would have 11 damage in the air next turn. Not quite enough for lethal. A rich card's expertise, similar to the last march, is going to draw a ton of cards here. And they get to cast something else for free. A large reach creatures could be a problem. And it's going to be an escape to the wilds, even more card draw. So no real answers to the Geist at the moment. But I imagine they'll have the answers for next turn. Spinning wheel, sure. The lighted halfling. And take 11. So we'll flash and rattle chains and hope to top deck something that can uh, help close out the game. Could also chum block the stomper with giver right now. The only drawback is I might need Giver to get past the Reach creature. Although opponent's going to be so low that as long as one of our flyers connects we can win the game. Also might have needed Giver to chum block a transform Detali so we don't take 11 poison. But only 9. So maybe that was a premature block. Soaring City, alright, that solves our problem. Can just bounce a tally now. Attack. Bone falls to three. So yeah, it just needs one more turn to potentially come back from what looked like a disastrous turn with the last march and the removal on Ephara. So I hope they just tap out to transform a tally. Verdant Rejuvenation. Okay, I guess we'll bounce a tally in response. Hope there's no protection spell here. Although I wouldn't be shocked since I didn't put many creatures in play with the uh, last march of the ends. That works, so now the Rejuvenation is a lot less impactful. Still puts a Primeval Titan into play. And they found an Ornithopter, so that's a flying blocker. There are some lands that could gain the opponent life if they enter, but I doubt they're playing too many of those. So on the board, they're still dead. Molten Impact takes out Rattle Chains. But yeah, we still have two flyers that will likely hit the opponent. GG's. Our angel token comes into play tapped and attacking, so it's not like they can tap it down with a spinning wheel, for instance. They're also a little bit short on mana. But if they have somehow an instant speed fight spell, they could fight the token, chump, geist, and survive. Should probably fetch to thin out the deck. And what do we get? An attack for four. And a Wanderer I can play, but an attack should do it. Opponent chumps. And they actually have a Spit Flame, but we picked up a Mausoleum Wanderer to counter the Spit Flame. Wow. So it ended up being relevant that we played it out. Yeah, this game had a lot of ups and downs, but I'm glad uh, we got to witness it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Nicol Bolas, the God Pharaoh. Alright, should be an epic battle, and our hand's good. We've got a turn 1 Selfless Savior, turn 2 Signet, and uh, 
turn three Geist with maybe Ethereal Armor to spare. If they have a counterspell for Geist, at least Arcane Signet makes it easier to replay. And then we can sit back on Spellcaller. Would still like a bit of extra pressure perhaps, only have the Ethereal Armor to speed up our clock. Memory Lapse also very good. So Savior helps against sweepers that destroy or deal damage. Plunder makes us discard. Um, probably okay ditching a land at this point. And then they can get a random card from my deck, that's okay. Mithril Coat can also give Geist Indestructible. There are still ways to destroy the Geist here if they have Let's say a Languish giving minus four, minus four. That gets around indestructible. Okay, so not having the lands coming back to bite us a little bit, but probably wanted to keep up a counter spell here anyways. I will play Ethereal Armor to amp up the pressure, although maybe it's still better to just attack and then keep up Spell Queller, which can also apply more pressure as a two-part flyer. Gontis next. Yeah, that seems like a good spell queller targets. And then now I could tap out for on Sarah's wings. Probably safer to just ethereal armor on the Geist attack. Keep up memory lapse. And then we've got a pretty fast clock. Points at six, so they should just be dead next turn if we counter their only play. Scarab God. Yeah, I guess we'll memory lapse, but could just let it resolve and fly over next turn. And that does it, so a quick one here against Nicol Bolas. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a green-white enchantment deck with Calyx. And our hand is a little clunky with a few lands coming into play tapped, but it has also quite a bit of potential if we put these enchantments on Geist. So I'll give it a shot. So I might just go with a tap land on turn 1, Sentinel on turn 2, and then Geist on 3. So Waste is my only untapped land at the moment. And I guess never mind, Fortress does at least come into play untapped if I play Prairie Stream because it has the basic land types. Although it still doesn't let me necessarily curve out perfectly. Okay, so play Sentinel. Don't want to enchant the Sentinel itself. Yeah, I guess if we want turn 1 Wastes, turn 2 Tapped Stream, and then turn 3 Fortress, I could have played Sentinel turn 1, and then Geist on 3. Either way, play Geist, get in for 1, Sentinel already drew a card, and Reign of Truth not doing a whole lot here, just gonna transform into a portrait at some point, even increasing the Sentinel's stacks, but it's gonna be a Calyx for now. Probably want to keep up Cyclonic Rifts to deal with Calyx so it doesn't copy anything, although Dorothea could also be a fine blocker. So we have options. So if I put both 1 mana enchantments on guys, it does grow up to a 4-4. So then I can attack and keep up Cyclonic Rifts. Although I'm likely bouncing Calyx anyway. Could also go for Dorothea as a blocker, but if they remove it and connect with Calyx, that could be bad. Witness Protection, I guess, is an even better solution now. Just shut off Calyx's ability, and then we can fly over next turn with one with the wind. So yeah, the enchantment deck getting a taste of their own medicine with all these auras. Borrow time. I guess can answer the Witness Protection, and then Calyx could attack, so we'll probably have to jump with the Esper Sentinel. Okay, that's fine. So what's next? One with the wind on Geist. Rune of Flight would also do it, but this applies a bit more pressure. And then I probably want to keep up Cyclonic Rifts. 
could bounce the borrowed time, get back our witness protection, make them recast borrowed time. That doesn't seem all that great. So now I can play Arcane Signet and still Cyclonic Rift. Could wait to bounce Calyx, so they're less likely to connect with an enchanted creature. But if they have a protection spell, I'm probably better off just bouncing it now. And next turn, our opponent should be dead to an attack. Replace Calyx. They need a flying blocker here. Cartouche, so now Calyx will trigger if they get to uh, connect with a portrait. Good guy still has hexproof. And we've got another way to give Geist flying. Rune of Flight on Geist. And that does it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand facing Ulamog, so colorless deck. And uh, yeah, we should be able to take them out before they get their 10 mana Eldrazi in play. I think I hang on to Curse of Silence on the off chance that our opponent's playing like a Blast Zone and can take it out before casting Ulamog. Should have time to deploy it later. And then for now, I just pass a turn. They're off to a good start with turn to idle. And yeah, there's a Blast Zone, Speak of the Devil. So still gonna play Geist. The Chaos Wand could also be interesting here. Casting some of our spells for free. Although it's mostly gonna be counter spells, which are not too helpful. No target for Fateful Absence, so that's a waste of an activation. Okay, so what's next? Can suit up a Geist with One with the Wind and All That Glitters. That's probably the most damage we can output right now. And then if they need to take a Blast Zone to level 2 to then blow up our enchantments, that's going to take them a while. And then we can deploy some one mana enchantments next. Another Chaos Wand activation. Finding Dovin's Veto. Yeah, we're not the best deck to target with Chaos Wand. And our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is acceptable. Facing Grazalax, so Mono Blue can definitely have some counter spells. So it's possible we'll have to suit up our Skrelv instead of Geist. Watch away can counter the opponent's commander at least. Thousand faced shadow turn one. Okay, so do I offer the trade? I think I'm okay with that. Opponent accepts. Opponent passes, and I'll just play on the rail. If our opponent plays Grasselax, I can witness protection. Not gonna tap out for my commander, especially when I'm stuck on three lanes. Now I'm kind of regretting trading Skrelf for Thousand Face Shadow. Opponent had a two mana flash creature into Grasselax, so they get to draw right away. But now we can resolve Geist, which is probably more important, and still have a mana left for witness protection. And then we can give Geist flying with Griff's Boon, so we can ignore the 1-1 one, one legitimate business person on the ground. So I'll just take three. Iteration could just bounce Grasselax, I suppose. But then we can counter it on the way down. Although Wash Away is no longer going to be one mana. Okay, uh, let's equip Underrail for sure. And then Sentinel's Eyes looks good. Uh, 
And then it's not like Grasslax does much on this board. Can just block the Trickster. It's gonna be an Angler next. So if Grivespoon resolves, can just fly over for the win. And we've got a Wash Away as backup. And our opponent explodes. All right, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Omnath Locus of all. Got multiple ways to remove it between Absence and Valor's stance. I am missing a third land, but we're on the draw, so we should be able to find one. And then Skrelf can also help Geist get through any blockers. So this seems keepable enough. Don't have any auras to put on the Geist, but eventually Nettlesist can also help out. And then now we can keep up Dovin's Veto alongside our two mana instance. Opponent ramping with Into the North, so they could already play Omnath next turn. And might as well get in for one. Ethereal Armor could be fun. Azusa's next, okay. So can't counter Azusa and can kill it before they play two lanes. So they got their value. Probably no point in taking out Azusa. So I'll just take my turn. And then do I still tap out for Geist? If our opponent's got a counter, that would be bad. Although not really putting them on a ton of counter spells necessarily. Play Geist, that resolves. And then we can still take out Omnath before it triggers. Itali, okay. What does it hit? A Joint Exploration and a Geist Light Snare. Alright, so just a Joint Exploration then. Could have been worse. Itali we can answer in a multitude of ways. Okay, Staggering Insight's pretty fun too. So I have the option of going Staggering Insight plus Ethereal Armor on Geist and then give it Pro Red to get past Itali, then our opponent can just jump with Azusa. So maybe best to just go for Insight and then take out Itali. And then if they want to jump with Azusa, that's alright. And let's Valor Stance. Even though this could make Geist indestructible in the face of a Sweeper, we do have Dovin's Veto as well, and then giving them a clue token when they've got this much mana can be scary. Opponent's just gonna take it to keep Azusa. Could have also paid two life to guarantee connecting with Geist by giving Pro Green, might have been better. Provisioner's next. And finally time for Omnath. By now our opponent can recast it, but nope, it's gonna be a time warp and then Omnath, I guess. Opponent gets in for one. Now we've got a Griv's Boon to fly over any blockers as well. So we don't need our Skrelv as much. Counterspell needs double blue. So kick things off with a Griff's Boon and an Ethereal Armor. And take it from there. So this should be a Tutron Clock in the air now. One's gonna wash away. Well, we could just Dovin's Veto. And then we'll get a bigger Geist. Or I can just let this happen, hit for 8 in the air. And then next turn we should be able to close out the game. Yeah, let's just let that happen. Keep our Dovin's Veto in the back pocket in case of any big non-creature spells next turn. Or I can just play Nettle Cysts. Could also take out Omnath right now. Or I can just sit back on two counter spells. Yeah, when I have two counter spells, I think I should just pass here. 
even if it takes us two turns to win, we've got our next two big plays covered. And killing Omnath also. Not the best when they can easily replay it. Don't care about a 4-4 all that much. Now I could kill at end of turn. And then they get to sank the clue token to draw. Now let's just take our turn. And then now I could go for Nettle Cyst Equip, and that's still lethal. Although they could have some instant speed interaction for all we know. And that does it. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Lazel, Black White. So they can specialize into a 3 6 double strike that can return a creature. Okay. Our hand seems fine. Got both our colors, three lanes, a bit of interaction, and ways to enhance our Geist. Turn one Curse of Silence. Might need to bounce that with our Petty Theft Adventure, and then we can still play our Geist on Curve. Silencer's next. I'm guessing that's also naming Geist. Yeah, that's fine. Still want to get it in play here. And then now we can try and equip it with Underill. Not sure if I want to pay the life to keep up slip out the back. Peacekeeper can also mess up our hand. Okay, Maul can help us fly over. And then I should probably keep up slip out the back. So that um, if our opponent does have an edict effect, I can still save Geist. Well, there is something to be said for Underill, Helping us make a bunch of spirit tokens next turn. Just means I wouldn't be attacking with Geist right now. Well, let's just equip it. It's a damage, so that's a pretty fast clock. Opponent can now replay Curse, naming something in hand. Curse of Silence is back. So if they name Slip Out to back and have an Edict, they can get us. Just names Geist again, so everything is naming Geist. But it's in place, so it doesn't really bother me. Could Slip Out to back her own Geist just so that uh, it picks up a counter, which could make a difference with her opponent at 17. But I'll just hang on to it. Commod Research gives us extra power. So get in for 9. Opponent's going to eliminate the token, fair enough. Could slip out the bank, but let's just uh, play Underill here. Could also keep up Tail's End for Lazel. And now I could also play Skrelv. Now let's just play Flame of the West. Can always bounce Lazel once it's in play, even if it does have uh, some protection built in. So our opponent hangs back with a silencer. Okay. So not sure what their plan is here. They have a Settled Wreckage, I can just unsubstantiate it. So that doesn't do it. So I can still equip and keep up my Counterspell. Fragment to Reality, targeting all of the Skyclaves. Okay, I guess that's fine. Get a SRAM in return. You guys can probably still attack here. We've got Fading Hope to bounce one of their blockers. So 
So I can bound Silencer to kill the Peacekeeper. And then we still have Slip Out the Bank available. Reprieve my Fading Hope. I'll just replay it. Definitely seeing some unique cards from the opponents. White Hand Disruption and Counter Spells. If they have a board wipe here, they could potentially stabilize. Since we are tapped out of slip out the back, opponent runs out Lazel at long last. But uh, yeah, the damage has been done. Specializes, getting back a creature from the graveyard. But if we just attack with the Geist, we'll get two more 1-1 one -one flyers and a 4-4 flyer. So that's enough for lethal. So don't really need to cast anything else. They really want to name Geist of St. Traft. A little chant also, pretty nice when we can sacrifice an angel token, for instance. Our opponent's got more one mana removal with Smite. So taking out Sram doesn't gain them any life, so yeah, that seems fine. No need to counter it. Opponent's still dead to our flyers. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Zimon and Dina, a sacrifice, a ramp deck. Missing blue mana, so I'll have to mulligan. This is better. We've got Skralv into probably not much on turn 2, but then a uh, Geist can be equipped with the sword, as well as enchanted by all sorts of things. And Skralv will be helpful in getting Geist through, although flying can get the job done too. Okay, Gilded Goose could get in the way. So, don't think I won with the wind, Skralv. Just pass it back. If we suspect our opponent's keeping up a counter spell, I can just play Underill. But we might see them uh, cast Zimon and Dina. Okay. So we both get to have our commander. Have to assume it's not that easy for their deck to remove a hexproof creature. And then next turn we can get busy, maybe just go for Comot Research and then Pro Green to get past our blockers. This one cannot block. And then I can still play Underill to then equip it next turn. Opponent will be ramping, so hopefully we can find some counter spells eventually to stop their big payoffs. Nettlesist is nice too. Kind of still liking Underill a little bit more. Nettlesist will be better once we have more of these enchantments in play. So yeah, let's stick to the plan. Come out research on Geist. Pro green with Skralv. And I'll just pay the life. See what we draw, and then most likely play on the rail. They could chump the 4-4 and then sacrifice Gilded Goose if they'd like. That's fine. And play Underill. So next turn I can equip for two mana, still play Nettlesist. Opponent ramps with Cultivate. So yeah, if they can cast some big Rivers Rebuke or Cyclonic Rift, we could certainly be in trouble. So that's why we want to dig towards a potential counterspell. Down to 19 we go. Probably no need to keep up Skralv's ability. Spirit Dancer is an interesting draw. So just attack with everyone. See what we draw. Not a counterspell. Okay, and that'll assist it is. 
And then next turn I can play Spirit Dancer into One with the Wind. But uh, yeah, a big bounce spell here could be pretty effective. Opponent counters our Nettle Cyst. Do I want to play Spirit Dancer? I guess I do. If they're gonna wipe my board, the treasures are gone anyway. And now I can maybe enchant the Spirit Dancer to get in for more damage. A Dryad is fine. And Underdog. Okay. So, one with the Wind on Spirit Dancer should just be game here. Could have also gone with one with the wind on Geists. Zemo and draws and drains us for two. So we can give Geist Pro Black, so they're forced to chump with Tendershoot Dried, but I think they're still dead, since we'll get six more power in the air between the Spirits and our Angel. Alright, so we got to see our Geist Brawl deck in action, and the deck seems very good. As long as we can resolve our Geist and suit it up, we can usually beat most other decks. Of course, there are still answers out there, mostly counter spells, but also sweepers if we don't have an indestructible effect lined up. And then maybe some opposing commanders like the large flying and lifelinking Atraxas can also make it difficult to race since they can just block a flying Geist without too many problems. But even there, we still have removal and counter spells to interact with those. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with how the deck ended up. That I'll do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.